Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, it's that time of week again, and I know you're excited and you've been waiting for it, but it's Tech Time Tuesday. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Tech Time Tuesday. This is where we have a quick dive each week into tech that I use in either my daily life, when I'm on hikes, when I'm traveling. And today we're looking at a few of the apps that I use while I'm out hiking, out in the middle of nowhere, out in the wilderness, out of phone range with no reception to speak of. So these are all apps that you can use on your phone when it's in airplane mode. And while I don't use them constantly, some of them I look at regularly, like every couple of hours while I'm out on the track. Others I may not use out of the track at all, but they're there if I need them. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mauser and I live in Tasmania, Australia. I love hiking in Tasmania. I think it's the best in the world, but I also love to get out and about and explore the world as well with my wife and my young children. We'll be doing a travel series later in the year. And if you want to see that and where we're going and what we get up to and how we travel with four kids, then click the subscribe button below, smash that like button, give it the thumbs up if you enjoy the video and you'll get notified hopefully about when we've got the new videos coming but for now it's tech time tuesday we're going to keep it short and sweet we know everyone's busy we're going to go through a list of five apps that i use while i'm out in the track you can use these apps while it is in airplane mode i think i'm pretty sure definitely sure. The first app that I use is one that sort of clicks into another device I've talked about a couple of times in this channel and that is with my Garmin InReach. Uh, satellite communication device, GPS and navigation device, messenger device, you know, all that good stuff. It's the app I use in conjunction with that. It's called Garmin EarthMate. Basically, it gives me similar functionality when I'm using my Garmin watch where I'm out on a track navigating with my watch where I've uploaded my route in prior to departing. But on Garmin EarthMate, it's tethered to that InReach device I can receive text messages on my device. I can respond to text messages. While you can do it on the actual inReach device itself, as you'll see, it's got not many buttons. It's very cumbersome to try and type a text message or navigate around this small sort of screen on this device. So I prefer to use the app. And the other beauty of the app, in addition to sending text messages and seeing where you are with the app, it allows you to operate the device without touching the device. The device generally, when I'm hiking, sits in my pack. I will do all the functionality of it apart from turning it on and off from the app. So that will, each morning when I'm heading out on the hike, I track my movement while I'm out there so everyone can keep track of where I am in case something happens. And I will press start and it will send a track point via the satellite messenger every 10 minutes while I'm hiking until I press the stop button on the app. Now the maps on the EarthMate aren't that detailed which is why I use another app which we'll talk about in a sec. It just gives me a brief overview of where I am in relation to any pre-planned routes that I had loaded into my device before I departed. So I really love it. It's got a compass as well that I normally use. If I have to use a compass I would use my old analog Sunto compass. It's got weather updates as well. Depending on the subscription you have you can get so many text messages per month that you can send and for an additional text message cost put the details on the screen here right now but you can request a weather update pings off the satellites and a few minutes later you get a message back with a current forecast for the region that you're in now while i don't treat it as gospel the forecast it is very helpful when you're on a longer trip and you can't communicate with other people uh, we do also use it to uh, send messages to friends who are in civilization will ask for a weather update from them but it's just a good quick reference as to what the weather might be doing. And we have found it to be reasonably accurate for parts of Tasmania where we hike. You can also activate the SOS functionality from the phone. You've got that as well, which is helpful. Um, yeah, generally just, it's a great app. I even use it when I'm just out and about and I wanna see what a peak is, I will open up the app. I don't have my inReach with me, it's at home, but I can be somewhere and I light up the app just to look at the map. And it still knows because of GPS functionality in an iPhone, it knows where you are on that map. So you can use it just when you're out and about um, to have a look around and sort of identify landmarks around you and stuff. Though I find that I'm using it even when I'm not using my inReach, I'm still using this app a bit occasionally. For example, the other day I was blueberry picking and looking at a mountain. I was wondering what that mountain was, what was the best route to get up there. And I was just showing a friend on the phone the map and where we were and the road access to this mountain that we could see. So great little app, could probably be better, but gee, it's a great app. Number two, the other app I use is an, another navigation app. I will use this navigation app when I want something a bit more detailed and it is called Avenza Map. It takes a bit of learning to get the hang of. Look, it's good in this perspective that there's a store where you can buy maps off of Enza that have been uploaded to their store. Or if you've already pre-purchased digital maps from places like Tasmap here in Tasmania in Australia, all the digital maps I've purchased, they are overlaid into the app. I can click the locate me button, the little, you know, the compassy button thing, and it will tell me where I am on that map. It's fantastic. I have the hard copy map that I take with me, but also have it digitally on my phone. I can see where I am on that map. We use 
used it in our recent walk to sort of figure out where we were, how far we had to go. It's just a bit more accurate than Earthmate and it gives you the actual map that you were using that you were referring to each time you pull out the hard copy map, but it's here on your device and it's really cool since I've learned how to use it properly. Yeah, maybe at some stage we will go through and we'll do some tutorials on events and maps. Yeah, I love it. And yeah, I think it's becoming a bit more popular now. It's great. I can upload all the different series of maps for Tasmania in there. It's just really good. I don't have to carry tons of maps. I carry the main ones for the walk, but then I can take other ones digitally that I want to look at for the rest of the state. And it's an app I use on every walk now. You can also load layers into there with your routes and all that sort of stuff. I know my mate Louis Taylor from the 158 Challenge last year used a Venza on every walk pretty much. Is that right, Louis? I think it is. He was using this app all the time. I know that he sort of told me about it and I thought I better look into this further and I started using it since he told me about it. So thanks, Louis. And yeah, while you're at it, check out Louis's Instagram account. Crazy stuff what he did. Raised $158,000 and did 158 mountains in Tasmania, the Ables, in 158 days, smashing the previous record. Crazy guy. He hadn't really done much hiking before that. But anyway, I digress. Avenza Maps, love it. And that's an app I will be using all the time. Number three, next app that I use, a lot that we discovered about three or four years ago is one called Peak Finder. It is crazy, this app. I think it is a paid app, unlike the other one, is the Peak Finder app, it's on the App Store. So yeah, these are all, I use an iPhone, so these are all apps that I use on an iPhone, but my mate Croft, he's a bit of an Android boy. He uses most of the same apps. So I think they're all available on his device, but if they're not, get an iPhone, I guess, I don't know. But the Peak Finder app is awesome. When we get these vistas of all these peaks and we'll be there standing there, oh, this is that peak and that's that peak and we'll be arguing it over a bit. We'll be having some vigorous debate over what peak is which, especially those ones way off in the distance. Well, now we bring out the Peak Finder and we scan it to the horizon, press the locate button and it will bring up a bit of an overlay. You can either just see a white background with an overlay of the mountains or you can actually put it onto the camera and it will overlay lines of the mountains map with the peak names above them. I'll put up some images here for you, but it is an amazing piece of software. I know nothing about the company, but it is cool that even here in Tasmania, when it sort of first came out, we'll poke it up on the horizon and it would tell you all the peaks. So we all have bought it and we use it on every trip. Even if, you know, they, we know what those peaks are. It's just a cool thing, especially to bring back because you can take photos in the app as well. It's really cool to take a photo of that with all the peak names and bring it back and just show your friends and family and they'll go, wow, look at that. Pretty cool app. It's not all that necessary but we love it that's peak finder and one i really like well, i haven't heard a bad thing about peak finder everyone i talk to loves it you look at all the reviews for it there's nothing really bad to say about it i don't know where the company are based or anything but fantastic work peak finder if you happen to stumble across this video that is an awesome app and we love it so thank you number four now this is an app i just have on my phone in case i need it it is basically in the event of emergency where i can't easily locate my location and i need to call emergency services it's called what three words what three words have divided the entire world into three meter squares. It basically assigns an address to each of those squares on the Earth's surface with three words. So you can easily relay those three words to anyone you need to identify exactly where on the Earth's surface you are. So the three words are as accurate as a GPS coordinate. They've got an example on the app, which is 51.520847 minus 0 0.1955210. That on the What Three Words app is field count soap. It is crazy crazy they've developed this app. I don't think I've ever had to use it, but it is there. It was made famous here in Australia a few years ago when someone was, I think, stranded at sea in a boat. They were able to talk to emergency services and they used what three words to, to provide the emergency services their location. We're able to go there straight away and pick them up and save them, as opposed to fumbling around with GPS coordinates and saying exactly where you are, which can get misinterpreted. What three words, very easy, very straightforward. And that's a, it's an amazing concept and an awesome idea, so well done of those guys but yeah that's what three words and it's just there if i had to use it i know i could send my location from my gps device but this is just a good reassuring backup to have even if i was trying to for some reason i could only communicate with my wife or a message or something i could tell them i'm on build count so that's my location with what three words yeah it's just a cool app to have and i keep it on my phone not that i'll have to use it hopefully but it's just there if i need it number five the app that i use the most is the iphone camera app who doesn't use the camera app on their 
their phone multiple times a day. Everyone, and while I'm out hiking, I use it non-stop. Even though I take this awesome camera that I'm filming this on, when I'm walking along, and I've just got my phone sitting here to take photos, the resolution of these things now, the quality of the video and the photos, I think the days of me taking my massive big camera and body out on every walk are numbered. I know on a lot of day walks now, I just take this, I take my iPhone, small, battery lasts crazy now, and the cameras are getting better all the time. So the camera app for the iPhone, I think is awesome. If you're into photography, then I've been trying to take better pictures with my iPhone, and there's a few settings and stuff I've changed. I found a really good YouTube video on that. I'll put the link to that below, and that will take you through to that channel where they've just shared some settings about good iPhone settings to have if you want to take more professional looking photos. And I've been using those for a little bit and found it really good. You know, and the zoom on the camera now on the iPhone is crazy. Sorry if you're an Android user, but look, I'm an iPhone boy. I always have been. I'm Apple ecosystem boy. It is great. And that is probably the app I use the most when I'm out hiking. Yeah, that's a wrap for today. Tech Time Tuesday. What should I call it? Leave your comments below and we'll figure that one out. How'd we go today for time? Getting better, I think. Better than last week. Got to shoot off, but thanks for joining us. If you like the video, hit the like button down below and hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you back here. We're going to keep doing these videos. The community is growing. I can just feel it. I can feel the community growing. We'd love to see you back here and we'll see you next time on Tech Time Tuesday. Oh, we're doing plenty of other videos. Check out some of the walks. Check out some of the hikes. Check out some of the gear reviews. We are going to be straight back soon with our next video. Until then, take it easy and I'll see you next time. Cheers.